I'm Jim. And I'm Frank. And I'm Jerry. And this is the JFJ Conspiracy Podcast, where the shop talk is rock. Ooh. Gentlemen, we're at episode number 99. That's wow. Right. 99. And before we get started, what I want to say is to all of our listeners, all you have to do, we're going to have a little contest. If, if you're listening to this, watching this, get on YouTube and in the comment section, just put number 100. That's all you have to do. And we will select one of those names if we get any. You know how our listeners are. They're not really mm -hmm. audience participation people. But if you do. They're deep, they're deep thinkers, Frank. That's why. Maybe that's okay. All right. They're yeah. good safe. I don't know. You get a lot of comments on your uh, CD pick of the day. Yeah, yeah, but that's just one or the other. You know, that's all yep. that is. This is, we're asking you to put 100 in the comment section on YouTube. And then the three of us will collectively choose one of those. And I've got a prize package worth well over $25. And we oh, will, yeah. Man, the way prices are today, Frank. Yeah. You are and, and that's loaded. American. That's Ameri you 25 American. Oh, that, oh okay. So, hey guys, I, last last episode we talked about Motley Crue and uh, moving forward without Mick Mars oh, touring, yeah, correct? Yeah. I read today, and I don't know if there's any truth to it or not, Motley Crue may be thinking about moving forward touring without Vince Neil now. What are your thoughts on that, Jim? <laughs> well... If they were taking John Karabi out on the Thank road, you. that might not yeah. be a bad thing. Yeah, yeah, it's not going to happen. No. So I, I, I don't know. Do you think they have a new studio in them? Album in them? They after seem to all, think so. After all this, okay. They think so. Okay. Uh, well, I think John Five would bring a host of uh, great, great ideas. So Ooh. talented. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to have to see in in the future uh, coming up if there was any truth to that or I think it was on Metal Edge or one of those magazines that posted online that uh, they are seriously considering moving forward without hmm. Vince Neil. Can what you do, do you think, that Jerry? Without the singer? The, well, no. like Jim said, if it's John Karabi and you got an album to back it up, yes. But to me, if they do with a new singer, I want a new studio album. I got to get my teeth into something. Oh. You know, I, you just know, me, just me. I don't know what direction they're going to go. You know, uh, uh, I've, I've read articles where Vince says, I'm a live singer. I'm not really a studio guy. And then I think, uh, you're out of your mind, dude, because... Studio is what makes them sound good. Yeah, you need all the help you can get at this point. Gooder, excuse me. Gooder. Good. It's going to be yeah. interesting. Much, much gooder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, yeah, I, don't, I don't know about that. Um, I, I think the first time around when they said, like, hey, we're not going to tour anymore, I thought that was... Uh, didn't they have it, their maybe uh, a little premature, but I didn't. I think they were sick of each other, to be honest with you. I wasn't missing them. No, yeah. no, <laughs> no, I really I. think it became a business and they weren't even talking to each other. And then they went away and Hey, there's still Miss money to be made. Let's get back together and do this again. Who cares what we told the fans? Everybody and, else does it. Why can't we? And, and speaking of which guys, the, that tour, they just come off of with Def Leppard and poison. Mm -hmm. was the biggest grossing concert for each band in their careers. Crazy. Well, well I mean, you know, stuff. Well, way more these days. prices. I was yeah. going to say, yeah. But right. when I read that, I was like, that's why they're still going. We can go out and pile up some money again. Let's go. Yeah. As long as they're rubes out there waiting and willing to pay the money. For the $150 VIP experience. Right. Oh, well. I honest, well... Or however much it is. I'm days. trying to think. Yeah. Did I see? I haven't seen Def Leppard. Um, but of, of those three, I, I would say the best of, uh, I mean, the best of the rest there. Um, Joan Jett was, was by far the best live. Uh, She's the out, most out rock of Poison and, and, and Motley and Joan put yeah. on the best show and sounded the best out of all three wow. that, I've ever, oh, wow. that I've ever seen. And what? It, but Joan had what six, eight songs. That's all they gave her, you know. Um, well, I'm sure it was thirty minutes, right, or whatever. Yeah, something like that. Poison. Say what you will about them and how goofy and looking they are and everything. I they like put, Poison guys. They're good That's live. Yep, they, they like are them. good live. Um, and now they're going to they're going to go out on their uh, uh, party 
something or other, their final tour next year, supposedly. Hmm. And they're calling it quits for, for touring. Um, I've seen all of them live. And like I said, Joan Jett, great live act. Boys, Def Leppard sounds like an older version of their records. They don't stray because I'm sure they're playing the tracks. They don't stray off too far from the albums. I hmm. wouldn't mind seeing them. Yeah. I wish Just I would have saw them at the time of High and Dry. Mm-hmm. Oh, me too. Me too. Yeah. And then, like I say, Motley Crue, I've seen them a few times and I've never been impressed with their live show. So that's just, they're, Some they're at overhyped. the country club, which I think would, would be like a great venue. Right. To see them. And they were good. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Ooh. Right. Good deal. Yeah. All right. Well, let's move ahead and uh, let's talk about a mail call. You got something for us today, uh, Jim? Uh, I've got all kinds of stuff. This is the one I was waiting on that wasn't showing up, but Remember a couple of episodes ago? Oh, that's right. Yeah. Talked about the Chelsea Curve. Yeah. We played right. them. Played Very their good. track. So, um, yeah, just got this um, this last week. All Red right. Records. Uh, find them on Bandcamp. You can find it either under Chelsea Curve or Red on Red Records. All right. Uh, I picked this up off of Discogs. Hell Yes Presents. This is a dumb. I always get that terrible light. Dum Dum Girl 7 inch. Oh, cool. Uh, stiff little finger 7 inch. There you go. Um, my son just brought this. He called me. He just came into town. We went and saw B 52s this weekend. Right over at the oh, Honda yeah. Center. Uh, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. And I, I and really wish, I really wish these bands, I mean, like when they're going to leave, they should really hit me up and say, like, hey, <laughs> would you mind picking our set list for us? Right. <laughs> uh, but i mean they played all the predictable stuff right mm-hmm. yeah you have to yeah. i would uh i would have picked a couple other i, w- I wish i would have done like just maybe one or two more songs but right. overall not bad and they and they s- still sound really good live very right. good anyway so my son came into town right before he left he uh <laughs> red cross ep 40th anniversary but this one's signed by jeff and steve See that? Nice. This is very nice. This was a limited edition Hellfire Red Vinyl autograph from Zia Records. Cool. Wow. So well done. Very cool. And the Piece de Resistance. Uh, this is the reissue of Material Issue Freak City soundtrack. There you go. Their last uh, last record for Mercury. Um, this is. Uh, Back Groove has started doing all these sort of power pop reissues. They've re- reissued two uh, two of the material issue albums. There's one more on the way, I guess. And, uh, all right. Happy to have it on vinyl. There you go. So, now, uh, first first time it's ever been on vinyl. Yeah. All right. Well done, Jim. What, what what year did that come out originally? Do you remember? Ooh, it had to be ninety two. I was going to say 191 or 92. Oh, 94. Wow. I was way off. Yeah. Okay. I guess okay. if I had thought about it, no, 92 probably would have been their second album. Yeah, 94. Gotcha. When it was originally, right. originally released. Issue. Cool. Now I've got something that I'm kind of excited to show you guys. This is the newest release and the only solo release. It's an EP and it's called Brenneman. And wow. it is a six song EP from one Jeffrey Brenneman. Hello, uh, Jeffrey. You've, if you follow him on uh, Facebook or anything, you've, you've heard about this uh, six songs from their period pieces from the time he was 10 years old till about 20. And these are different stories of places that he's gone. First time he's ever done a lead vocal. Anyways, this <coughs> is Excuse me. going to be available on CD mainly. Uh, November 17th, I think is when it's coming out. So is is the vinyl available yet? It is available. It's not cheap. It is done through a lathe cut company and uh, they charge quite a bit because it's, it's actually a uh, album on demand. Oh, album on demand. Okay. Yeah. So if you're so a collector. I, I tried to find it on Bandcamp on Bandcamp Friday. So I went there and could not find yeah. a link anywhere. And I was like, is this maybe I'm ahead of the curve? Maybe it's not out yet. Um, I don't know if he's published the page yet or not. We were looking at it the other day, and he was going to put one song available now. I think if you look up Brenneman, 
you'll find it's one under song Brenneman. available. Okay. Yeah. But, you got to uh, know where you're looking. So I was going to shoot you a text and say, where can I find you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'll put up the link if you if you want to help him out and uh, purchase a vinyl version of it also. You know, uh, anything to support our friends is what I, what I'm all Absolutely. about. Absolutely. So. so there you go. All right. Well, that's mail call for this episode, episode 99. And Jerry, don't you have some new music for us this week? I sure do, Frank and Jim. I have a band called The Amplifier Heads, which I love that name of yeah. that band. The Amplifier Heads out of Boston, Mass. Uh, this album is Rectifier. Uh, the song Frank's Gonna Spin is The Man Who Invented Rock and Roll. We got a one-man tour de force here, gentlemen. You know I love that. We got Sal Baglio. All instruments, all vocals, mixed by Warren Babson and Bang a Song Studios in Gloucester, Mass. Mastered by Jim Demain at Yes Master Studios in Nashville, Tennessee. <laughs> and uh, words and music again, Salvatore Baglio at Sweet Bread Songs A S C A P. And all things social, folks out in conspiracy land, the amplifierheads.com will take you everywhere. And here's one little quote from uh, Rick Harris, songwriter and a guitar extraordinario from Ireland. Sal Baglio's ability to be sad, poignant, witty, morbid, brilliant, hysterical, and downright ridiculous, while being both oblique and accessible, all at the same time is unparalleled. So take mm -hmm. that to the bank, folks out in conspiracy land. Uh, the Amplifier Heads with the man who invented rock and roll. All right, before I play this, Jim, get your stopwatch ready. Just like wow. that. And we're talking like about that. the amplifier heads out of Boston, out of Boston. Love it. The man who invented rock and roll, nice and raw and gritty. What do you think, Jim? I'm, I'm going to say two, two minutes. Just add two minutes, if not right under. Yeah. I appreciate their brevity. Well done. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the voice was big, uh, a yeah. little, little surprising right out of the box. Uh, I don't know if you call it straight blues, but it's a blues based. Yeah. Very blues based for, for uh, singing about the man who invented rock and roll. Who is the man who invented rock and roll? Well, that goes way back and it depends yeah. on who you talk to. Huh? Depends, depends on, on who, who you, you talk, talk to. to. Yeah, Muddy Waters. I like to think Chuck Berry. Right? Chuck Berry. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, um, it was good. I enjoyed it. Yeah. What I liked about it for a minute song that's two minutes long, it starts off with a little riff, something a little different, and it has a little bit of everything mm -hmm. right through and gets it. to a chorus, and then you know what the song's about, and then it just stops abruptly. That's it. it. Honestly, yeah. reminded me a little bit of Shake and Aid. Yeah, a little bit. Maybe Kinda. a little bit. Yeah. 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 Had, had those edges to it. 
Yeah. All right. And that's available on Bandcamp, right? Yes. Yes. And then, and again, um, the amplifier, the amplifierheads.com will take you everywhere else, but for now, Bandcamp. All Hit right. Bandcamp for the amplifier heads out of Boston. Great stuff. I do, lo- I do love the name. I yeah. do too. That's a fantastic name. Good stuff. All right, guys. Um, last episode was my pick for a classic album. And I went with Bob Seger and the Silver Bullet Band with Night Moves. Good pick. Um, I've been listening to it on the treadmill here and there, uh, but I don't think I ever listened. I always bounce around, listen to different different stuff. I've been listening to the live stuff of Bob Seger, which I really enjoy. But this particular album uh, came out on October 22nd, 1976. Uh, Capitol Records was his ninth album. And you'd think after nine albums, things are going to get a little stale. It's just... You know, but he had a formula too, using the horns, a lot, a lot yeah. of the uh, that Detroit mojo going on there, and uh, I really enjoyed the album. I'm I'm looking up here the the singles that came out. A lot out of tunes of that. on the radio, yeah. I would say most of that. Well, we had night moves. At sometime I heard on the radio, yeah. Yeah, my, uh, Main Street, yeah, which was kind of a mellower tune, and then Rock and Roll Never Forgets, which yeah. is such a good good song. Um. That was his ninth record. Ninth, isn't that record. wild? Yeah, I would have said that's got to be like his third or fourth. I know it. It was six, six tuple platinum. Wow, I believe that. Yeah, yeah, no, that thing. I remember that. That was huge. Right. And what's funny is, is I remember in the old days, like reading Cream magazine, he used to open up for Kiss, and I thought, well, what a strange. I was just yeah, thinking about that today too. Yeah, <laughs> I was like I thinking, think, yeah, didn't they open? Didn't he open up for Kiss? What a yeah. weird bill that would have been. Yeah. But you know what? He brought in a lot of the the Detroit crowd, mm-hmm. and he they, they had a lot of the same audience, believe it or not. And because uh, we think of you know Kiss as theatrics and all this stuff, but the people that played the music think of the bands that opened up before Ted Nugent, Bob Seger, Cheap, Cheap Trick, Trick. Yep. strong, strong opening acts. So Bob Seger was no exception. Oh, yeah. So going with that. I have to say I had a favorite tune and it's just my favorite tune today because I, I like a lot of them on there, but I went a little, uh, talking about a little blues, a little, little something a little different. And how about come to Papa? Oh, now that being said, Jerry, you fired up the Jerry Tron 2000. It's fired up and, uh, Wi-Fi is enabled Frank, but I didn't right. pick the right song. Darn That's it. okay. What'd you pick for me? For Frank. Sunspot Baby. Uh, when I listen to that, I go, it's Frank. <laughs> that may I mean, come up again. Who knows? No, no. Before, before, obviously. Right. Now we have it now. But <laughs> that's what popped into my head when I hear the lyrics. I go, right? yeah, you know. I, uh, you that know. was way up there. Yeah. Uh-huh. And you know. uh, Jim, what did you pick for me? I, I <laughs> said me. fire down below. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. And, and you know what's funny is I put They're that song yeah. right there with her strut. And I know you don't, you, you know, you kind of lost interest at that point. That was the kind of, his songs are storytelling story. songs. They, they are storytelling songs. He yeah. tells stories. Yeah. Yes, he does. Yep. All right, Jerry, what was your favorite tune on Night Moves? Oh, my favorite tune. Your is, favorite uh, tune. Has been since the first time I ever heard it, even back then, is Main Street. Ah. I, I love that. I love the way he <laughs> delivers it. I yeah. love the story. I love the lyrics. I love the music. Mm. To this day. And because it was a little softer and everything, it was, you know, very radio friendly. I didn't pick it that was. for you. I loved it. I went with rock and roll. Never forgets. Very good. Jerry. Yeah. That, that, that could be, that would be a easy number two. Absolutely. Yeah. Jim, I do like you pick too. Jerry. Yeah. Rock wow. and roll. Never forgets. Yeah. All right, guys. All right. And, and I debated on uh, Main Street. I was yeah. Like, it's yeah. like a total Jerry song, and I thought, uh-huh. no, no, it's too simple, too simple. It's too, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, well I, I just, I, I, thought, I just like, love oh, the something a little more rocking. Yeah. Here. Well, like you're I saying, Frank, know. he's telling a story, and I love right. the story he tells it. Yeah. I just love it. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. All right, Jim, you're gonna bring us on home. What was your favorite song on Night Moves? Uh, it has been since I since I first heard the record, and it is the title track, Night Moves. Ah. <laughs> Nowhere near close. I went with uh, Sunspot Baby. <laughs> <laughs> and on the Jerry Tron 2000, what do we have? 
Mary Lou. Mary Lou. Oh, yeah. tried to I was, that was another one I was kind of thinking for, for Frank. Yeah, I almost picked that one myself. That is a good one. I think I think the reason was because I can remember this song from my teenage years. I think I was trying to shake off some awkward teenage blues. That's <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Why well, it kind of resonated with you me and at the time us. and yeah. still love the song. And that's sure enough that that song resonates, like you say, with probably every teenager of that era. Yep. All right. Well, Jerry, you have the next pick for classic album. So hold on to that. We'll come to that later. Okay. And right now I want to bring to you a, uh, we had a band several episodes ago. Uh, they were called Carver. I don't know if you remember them or not. Mm-hmm. They're a local band. We, we played them well. Their, their guitarist, his name is uh, GD. And um, he's kind of branched out on his own now. He's got a, a band called GD and Supermoon. So they've got, a, they've got an, an album coming out soon. But he, he sent me one single to play. And uh, he told me he's born in L.A., raised in the uh, Inland Empire. And he's been creating music as long as he can remember. Um, he says after years of playing in bands and having uh, played coast to coast in big venues and small, he's back home and he's writing his own songs and he's ready to put out his own music. And the first single is called Ready for the Fall. And uh, I will. Uh, he also sent me a video and I'll attach the, the link to that in our on our page on YouTube. But right here is uh, GD and Supermoon. With Ready for the Fall. Well, Oof. there's GD and Supermoon with Ready for the Fall. What'd you think about that, Jerry? I like it. Heavy drums, heavy background. Yeah, heavy. I, I like it. I yeah. like that a lot. All right. Jim, what are your thoughts? Uh, I enjoyed that. Um, thought it was very well produced, mm-hmm. very well engineered. Loved the guitar tone and the solo. Yeah. And uh, I like the backing vocal arrangement. I like 
the I just the way it sounds is really good. Right. Enjoy the enjoy the vocals. I, well done. Very well Excellent. done song. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I was talking to Jerry before. I don't think it's available yet. It it will be soon, but I'll leave the link again for the video so you can check out the song. And as soon as it becomes available on Bandcamp, iTunes, or whatever platforms it's available on, we'll uh, make that available to everybody. Because uh, I'm mean, interested to see what else he's got going on because that, that was yeah. a yeah, pretty, pretty just... cool tune. All right, yeah, you guys. Yeah. Now, last episode, we had a riff. And I, I don't know if you guys remember it or not. I'll, uh, I'm going to turn it down because it's a loud riff. And uh, it goes something like this. Does that ring any bells? It does, but I'm not placing it. Sounds mm-hmm. like Wiley Crew to me. Yeah. That's oh, all yeah. I got. It's all you got? Well, it was yeah. Dio with Stand Up and Shout. Stand Up and Shout, oh. yes. So that, that was... I um, recognize the guitar tone, yeah. but I, right. I wasn't hitting the song at it, all. Vivian Campbell when he still Vivian had a couple Campbell. balls. Yeah. Dang. <laughs> yeah. Speaking Before of he Def visited Leopard, the vet, shots yeah. fired. <laughs> not, a, not a fan of his at all. If you could Neither am I. Once once Steve Clark left, anyway. Yeah. yeah. Once, yeah. He didn't leave. He passed away, but <laughs> well, yeah. he left us. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So the new riff is going to go something like this. Tell me if you can uh, check this out. One more time. Hold on. My my internet's lagging. Okay. It's a mid eighties riff. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know that one off the bat. You may not know it right now, but you will later, I'm sure. Um, believe it or not, it is yeah. thirty years old. So. I got it off of a 30th anniversary album. Oh. Yeah. I go figure. The, the years they are a flying. It's it's a shame. It's a shame. <laughs> Not right. really. We at least we made it, you know. <laughs> yeah. We, we right? can still listen to it. <laughs> That's what I Not, like. Not everybody gets to grow old. Not everybody, yeah. Yeah. Thankful. Well, when we get old, then we can reminisce. That's okay. right. Yeah. Now, Jim, you've got a band for us this week. I do. Uh, we're about a band that we uh, had played back in 2020. Wow. Uh, Self Cut Bangs. Okay. And uh, yep. this is their this is their second album. And uh, I guess what happened was they had such a great response to the first album, they decided, hey, why not do a second one? So, That's right. Um, it's uh, Kaylee O'Neill and Sean Petchy um a couple from two different bands mm-hmm. together as the project self-cut bangs started writing songs uh every like every single saturday they do one song every saturday till they had an album's worth released it so now they're back with their second album and uh they received a lot of accolades for the first album they were a nominated for polaris music prize Best Canadian album based on artistic merit. Hmm. Twenty-seven weeks on the college uh, college charts. Top five album of twenty twenty by the Calgary Herald. Wow! And they're Canadian, so you know you, they have to be super they're nice. Proud. Yeah, I mean it <laughs> goes without saying, I guess. Yeah, as soon right. as you said Calgary, I figured. Anyway, I, I would like to think it was the fact that they appeared on the JFJ Conspiracy Podcast. We launched their career. Rolling for them, right? Yeah. Probably not, but anyway. Well, maybe our names I are. To say that we were in early on the. There you go. On the whole thing, right? So anyway, they have a brand new album and uh, and a couple of videos actually, and there's a video for this song. But this is uh, the first single off the record. It's called Shivers. And so uh, go ahead and drop the needle in the groove, Frank. All right.
Well, coming in at just at wow. two and a half minutes. That's wow. the uh, self cut bangs from uh, Circle Around the Free album. Yes. And the song is Shivers. A little bit of everything going on there. We have jangly pop guitars. We've got bass those riff. Bass. We got a solo. We got the Backing vocals. Bo- yeah. Wow. A lot they of stuff going on there. It's that fuzz bass, but like that. He I, just I, kept I, running. I yeah. the bass in the song, obviously. There you go. Great tone. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that tune. My but gosh. All we need to do is find out if our name is on any of their awards as uh, launched you know, by, discovered by, anything uh, whatsoever. Recommended, <laughs> recommended by. Highly yeah. recommended. Oh, there's a great, great quote. Let's see if I can. Let me find this real quick. Great quote about the band. Cotton candy swirl of three minute sugar rushes. And that's what it was. Yeah. That's 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 beautiful. If you like uh X Hex, Red Cross, Coat Hangers, Peach Kelly Pop, Matthew Sweet, Blondie, Sloan. This is right up your alley. Yes. Yeah, I love all those bands. That's good. <laughs> That's right after good. we're done here, I'm going to go check my glucose level because there was so That's much right. sugar in that. <laughs> well, it was beautiful, All though. All right, self-cut yeah. bangs. Check them out. I love it. Yeah. All right, Jerry, before we get into your classic pick for mm-hmm. the next episode, um, did either of you see any of the photos of K.K. Downing playing with Judas Priest at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame last night? Uh, I no. I saw just a picture of him with them. Okay. There's video uh, on I'm YouTube. Sure. Uh, sounds great. They happen to be playing in Ontario, California tonight. Yes. At, at the Ontario Center, whoever owns that now. Yeah. I'm curious if KK is going to make an appearance there or not. A little walk on. Yeah. I think why not? If he does, that opens the door up for sitting in for Glenn, who can really not play a full show anymore. Oh, yeah. Huh. Because Faulkner, Richie, I believe he's playing the original Glenn Tipton parts, even though he's got the KK Downing look, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Could be something, right? Yes, it could be, Frank. It would be it would be a cool little treat for everybody. That that would be, yeah. Yeah. But I don't know. There's there's been a lot of bad blood there too. So yeah. 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 You, got, you got a bunch of old hags fighting with yep. each other. <laughs> yep. You know, and it's just you don't know if they can get over it or not. You don't know. Throw, let's throw enough money at them. Let's see what happens. Yeah. You hope. I mean, you got to pay off that golf course. You think when bands have been together that long, right? There's, there's, there's going to be irritations. There's going right. to be things that are going to come up. You hope that people can just put it aside and yeah. Well, you'd think so. The, the, the who is the greatest example. They went 25 years and then they reunion album. Pete admits it. It's my fault. You know? Yeah. In a song, in song. Right. But I mean, 25 years, guys, you know? Well, they had a little help from. Um, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Little band band Dr. member Death. changes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, <clears throat> I don't know. Well, yeah. Oh. they. I think, yeah, 82 was their last one. And then 06 was their return. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, who's to say? I mean, I can't imagine us. I try to imagine us, our career. Like, we're all millionaires now. Right. You know, but I, I can't imagine just fighting with you guys we disagree but i can't imagine just pulling that move we'll find that you know well you know what they say yeah. money changes everything that's right yeah, that's the yeah. fact good yeah. thing good thing we're us three are still pure at heart folks yeah, yeah. nothing wrong with being a popper i'll tell you that nope. Nope. all right Jer- jerry what is your album pick for the next episode which might just happen to be episode 100 the debut of this band who i was not really hip on back in the day but i'm going with the debut oh very nice big, big star, star. Excellent. Yes. Wow. excellent excellent 72 i think their first album something wow. like that but um i was never if if you were to ask me back in our high school days big star to me i would have said that's a country act mm-hmm. i never got into him i never heard and then i hear this i listened to sport talk radio on the way home from work about three weeks ago they have this little bit where they're bringing them up and how things happened and how they had a crappy record company didn't promote anything didn't you know and then they do and then these guys are just saying everybody that's heard him says how could these guys not be on top of the heap 
should be huge stars. Yeah, right? they should be. And people to this day say, you know, oh. how these guys aren't prolific. But anyway, Excellent so what choice. I thank you guys very much. <clears throat> Excuse me, folks on Conspiracy Land. So, uh, yeah, big star, the debut. And uh, let's see what happens. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Influenced a lot of people. Yes. Kind of like a Velvet Underground thing, right? Yeah. That's Just... that, um, the right people heard them. I mean, they were a huge influence on a lot of bands. But yeah. 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 Everybody who heard them went out and started a band kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. So, exactly. Yeah. All right. We're well, looking forward to that. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Great besides, pick, Jerry. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Yeah, yeah. Good stuff, Bes too. Besides I mean, that, you know, Jerry, do you have anything you want to talk about before we get out of here? Yeah, folks on Conspiracy Land, uh, we appreciate you watching and listening. Uh, we're this close to episode 100, like Frank said. But uh, keep rocking, folks out there in Conspiracy Land. It's all out there. We got the amplifier heads, GD and Supermoon and self-cut bangs. Uh, great music is out there. It's still out there, and it's still available. So thank you out there. Folks on Conspiracy Land, keep rocking. Thank you. All right. And don't forget to comment on this episode. 100. 100. All you have to do, be be included in the big party uh, in a couple of weeks. Holy wow. mackerel. Uh, well, we're going to have something. balloons. Uh, there's going to be clowns. And All right. I think a bouncy house. Are you talking uh, about the three of us? I was oh, just yeah. going to say, just like every <laughs> show. Yeah. <laughs> yes we're getting dressed up and everything it's That's it's gonna right. be crazy it's You're gonna love it folks wow yeah. i'm gonna have cindy put out a buffet so when we're done um i can have dinner awesome yeah, yeah. that's beautiful <laughs> bless her heart oh, that's yeah. awesome she's going it's it's crazy i mean i've put out oh, a man. list of of hors d'oeuvres and different things oh. uh, special it's gonna be special wow <laughs> But seriously, put down 100 in the comments on this episode and get included on the, the contest for episode 100. It's a big deal to us to be around for 100 episodes. It's only taken three and a half, four years or whatever it's taken to yeah, do. So I, We started right around now. Yeah. 18, 2018, I think. We're not, we're not the most prolific, but no. it, it's quality every show. This is you true. ain't kidding, Jaime. <laughs> this is so true. And, you and ain't kidding, nope, brother. Especially with the internet glitches and everything. We overcome adversity week yes. after week after week. Tornadoes, <laughs> thunderstorms. Bad eyesight. <laughs> bad memory. Bad eyesight, <laughs> which we all have. So yep. uh, you know it. All right, Jim, you got anything? Sure. If you've made it this far. Smash that like button, subscribe, ring the notification bell, leave a comment, put 100 down below. It's super simple. It's easy to do. Just do it. We love you. Thanks. Thanks for love here. you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate all of our subscribers. We appreciate everybody who, who actually takes the time to listen. Everybody yes, else. we sure you. do. Thank you so much. And, yep. and before we say goodbye, I want to make sure everybody, they know that I want all of you cheese bags to stay fresh. So, <laughs> stay fresh cheese bags stay fresh cheese bags <laughs> Jim take us home uh, shop is closed <laughs>